ever been in a situation where a narcissist has done something to hurt you or upset you and you're justified in your anger or your hurt and yet somehow the narcissist manages to flip it all around and before you know it you're the one apologizing well that's what we're talking about today at queenbeing.com exactly why it is that when a narcissist does something to hurt or upset you they somehow manage to not only make it your fault but to get you to apologize and then they get upset with you when you don't forget the next minute or the next day they seem to think that they get instant immunity for anything they do wrong so let's get started My name is Angie Atkinson and on this channel I offer free daily video coaching to help you discover, understand, and overcome narcissistic abuse in toxic relationships. I like to call it toxic relationship rehab. Does that sound good to you? If so, hit that subscribe button and we'll get going. So by now you probably already know that narcissists have this way of being a master at deflection, right? Most narcissists, they're masters of deflection. And the reason that I think that is is because they don't really like to take any responsibility in their lives, right? But what I've noticed and what a lot of people have said to me is that narcissists have this thing that they do. It's kind of crazy. For example, if let's say you told a narcissist, don't drive my car today. The weather's terrible. I just want to make sure my car is safe and I don't have insurance or something like that. And let's say the narcissist jumps in your car anyway when you're not looking, drives the car, wrecks the car, calls you from the hospital. They're fine, but the car is totaled. You go pick them up and you're very upset and angry. They instantly are like, you know what, I'm so sorry, you were right, I shouldn't have driven your car, if you're lucky. But before you know it, they expect that you should have already, you know, forgiven and forgotten. Let bygones be bygones, they'll tell you. That's in the past. How can you still be talking about that? And you're like, wait a minute, that was just like an hour ago that I picked you up from the hospital. Well, that's the past. You're living in the past. You can't live in the past. Like I said, narcissists are masters at deflection. When they're in trouble, their actions stop being the focus for them almost immediately. And suddenly, before you know it, you're the one on trial. Whether you're on trial for something tiny, like not taking out the trash or, you know, the way you move your mouth when you're talking or something stupid like that, or you're on trial for holding on to the past and living in the past an hour after the event occurred when you're still upset about it. They don't like it when you're upset about anything. They don't like it if you hold on to anything that you were righteously angry about or upset about. In fact, they'll attack you and before you know it, you're apologizing to them for holding on to the past. I call this the narcissistic flip. And basically what it means is that you've made a valid point and the narcissist is quite offended that you had the nerve to question him or her about that point and flips the script on you and suddenly you're the one apologizing. Before you know it, you're also the one who's sorry, mostly that you engaged in another pointless argument with this person. This is a form of gaslighting and it does make you feel a little bit crazy but how do they do it how do they manage to make you the bad guy when they are obviously the one who did the crime how are you doing the time well let's just take in a moment and look at an example of how that works and where that came from I'm gonna tell you a little story about two people I know called Jeff and Alicia not their real name so Jeff he's a narcissist as long as he and Alicia have been together 15 or 20 years he's never been a real serious drinker he would drink maybe at parties or during certain occasions but in general maybe just a few times a year one day Jeff suddenly develops a shocking drinking problem he becomes almost alcoholic like suddenly he's spending more time away from home and when he is home he's not very nice and he's become something of a difficult person to live with to say the very least the kids have noticed and they've complained to Alicia who one day decides you know what I need to bring this up to Jeff so she gingerly brings it up and says listen the kids are really kind of struggling with how much you're drinking they're shocked that you're not around and they don't really like the way you're treating them when you're drinking she's very careful about the way she says this she she brings it up in the most ginger way she possibly can because she understands Jeff's a narcissist and most likely anything she says he's going to attack her about but in the past she's been able to bring him certain concerns about the kids and he took it better than other things because of course he sees his children as extensions of himself, so some part of him might want to still make the kids happy, right? Well, initially, Jeff admits, okay, yeah, I see that. The kids have kind of said some things to me, too, and I felt a little worried about it. But then he says, but you know, Alicia, it's really all your fault. You're the one complaining. You're the one poisoning my children against me. You, Alicia, are the bad guy. And now Alicia's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I brought you a concern about you that's legitimate and real, 
and you're twisting everything and making me the bad guy. She says, I've done nothing but try to make the kids understand you and try to make them closer to you because you're their father and I love you. But he systematically pulls the old switcheroo on her and before she knows it, she's the one under the microscope. Not only has Jeff removed his bad behavior from the situation, but in fact he's flipped it all around and made Alicia the bad guy. Now she's on trial and she wonders to herself, wait a minute, am I the bad guy? Did I do something to poison our children against Jeff? Could Jeff be right here? Am I really the problem? Maybe I'm really just a bad mom. What if I really been the problem all along. Maybe I really am as crazy as Jeff says I am. After all, I can't even seem to make a simple decision anymore. My friends, Alicia has just been gaslighted in that situation. And after all these years, it's just another day in the life of a narcissistic supply. So does that sound familiar to you? Have you experienced that sort of abuse from your narcissist where they've done something to hurt or upset you and you've tried to talk to them about it and they've become offended and turned you into the bad guy? If so, share your thoughts below in the comments and let me know. How are you supposed to navigate this mess? Well, before we get to that, we have to figure out exactly what it means when a narcissist says they're sorry in the first place. So it can mean a few different things, but mostly what it means is number one, let's make up. Number two, see how good I am. You owe me some forgiveness. Number three, we won't talk about this again. And number four, our relationship has always been all about me, but I'm going to pretend to care about your feelings just to shut you up. What happens is that we tend to believe that, okay, They've apologized, they mean it, they won't do it again, they're sorry, they see that they did something wrong and things will get better. But as we begin to recover and we go into starting to accept ourselves for who we are, we don't really tolerate that as much anymore and we, we become indignant and we go, you know, you don't really seem very sorry. You're acting like nothing happened and it happened like an hour ago. What you have to understand is what's really going on there. They're not really sorry. They're not really not going to do it again. They don't see what they did is wrong and things will not get better in your relationship. The truth is that the narcissist is managing your relationship in order to keep you under control, keep you calm. The narcissist will do the same thing again and they will do it without question, without remorse because all they're doing here is just really trying to get themselves off the hook so they can continue on doing things the way they've always done them. They don't care how their behavior impacted you because they have no remorse, they have no empathy for you, they don't care how you feel, and they never will. They just think that if they apologize, they get like a, a get out of jail free card. They don't have to deal with anything else. I'm sorry, it's over, shut up, it's over. And if you try to hold them accountable for their behavior, well they go, well, I said I'm sorry, I said I'm sorry, what more do you want from me? I said I'm sorry. But you have to know things aren't going to change. Things will always remain the same as long as the narcissist is involved in that relationship. You have to know that the narcissistic apology is just a game. It's part of the game. Even though it feels good, it's part of the illusion of good in the relationship. It's part of that thing, that intermittent reinforcement that keeps you sucked in. You know, they treat you like crap, treat you like crap, treat you like crap. And then before you know it, something bad happens and you go, no, that's not okay with me. And then they go, I'm sorry. And you go, oh, they're sorry. It's a crumb. It's intermittent reinforcement. You get hooked by this. You get hooked by the emotion that you feel, the, the warmth of the apology, the gratitude you feel that they've acknowledged their problem. You might feel relieved. You might feel like you can relax. But if you continue to try to hold them accountable, all hell's about to rain down on you, isn't it? You have to understand part of the thing that creates the trauma bond that keeps you stuck with the narcissist in the first place is stuff like this, intermittent reinforcement. A narcissist can react in a lot of different ways, like I said. They might just attack you for having the nerve to hold them accountable. They might try to play the poor me game where they consistently beat themselves up verbally to you so that you can be like, oh, you're not that bad. I'm not, don't be so sad. Don't be so hard on yourself. Or they might just sort of try to explain. So unless you're really understanding what you're hearing with this and you're really attuned to it, an explanation can sound a lot like an apology. For example, let's say the narcissist ran over your dog with their car. Well, the narcissist might say, I didn't mean to run into your dog, but it just ran right out in front of me. There was nothing I could do to stop it. Now, you might initially take that as an apology, but in reality, all they've done is explain what they did. It's an apology substitute. It sort of implies remorse, but actually doesn't show any. But the biggest thing is narcissists deflect blame. So how are you supposed to deal with it when they deflect blame, when they've done something to hurt you and you feel righteously angry? How are you supposed to let bygones be bygones and just forget about it? When you don't actually get a genuine apology and you don't really think they're sorry, what are you supposed to do? Number one, you change the way you deal with a narcissist. 
you pull back a little bit. If you can't go no contact entirely, you go low contact or you at the very least go gray rock. And when they ask you, why are you being so cold to me? You can straight up tell them, well, you don't take responsibility for your actions. Now, this isn't going to work if your narcissist is physically abusive, but in that case, I wouldn't even be watching this video if I were you. I would be getting the heck out of there. There's no reason to stay with somebody who's physically abusing you, even if it means you have to go to a shelter to be safe. Just get safe. Now, with that being said, the next thing that you can do if you can't go no contact is to be very confrontational and straight up demand that they apologize. What you have to understand though is any apology you get is not going to be a true apology. Really, the only solution, the only way to navigate this situation is to simply do what I call the old one-two punch. You sort of teach a narcissist how to treat you in the same way that you train a dog. So here's how you do it. Before I tell you how to do this, I want to remind you this is simply a band-aid and really the true solution is to stop dealing with that person. But if you're not able to and you just want to soothe the current situation, here's what you do. Number one, you do not reward the narcissist's bad behavior with the desired reaction. So the narcissist has a certain reaction they expect from you when they act a certain kind of way, right? So if they attack you, they might expect you to cry or scream or throw things, whatever. However you personally react, they like that. They like the drama. So your only response, your only response to negative behavior must be gray rock. That means you give them zero emotional anything. You don't react at all to the negative behavior. Now, you should know this can and does occasionally incite serious narcissistic rage. So do not do this if you are in a physically abusive situation. This is not the answer. But if you're not being physically abused, you can do this and they may yell and scream, but it is very effective if you hold out. So know this, no, you may get narcissistic rage, narcissistic injury, which is the poor me act. Extreme gaslighting. You might feel angry, you might feel upset, you might feel frustrated and overwhelmed. But listen, if you hold out and you don't give in and you don't show it no matter what, it'll work. Stay positive, stay polite, just give them zero emotional response and refuse to talk about the thing that they're attacking you about. The next step is to reward all good behavior with exactly what the narcissist wants and what they need from you. Love, admiration, and the proper place on their pedestal. So when the narcissist behaves him or herself, even if you know for sure that that's just love bombing and idealization, you take a time and you bestow all the love and admiration you can on that narcissist. You tell them they're amazing and perfect and wonderful, and you do it as sincerely as you can. And please note, this even works if you're dealing with an ex in a co-parenting situation, or a boss, or a coworker. Just adjust it to make it appropriate for the situation. My point is, if you're stuck with a narcissist and you can't change the way they're treating you, and you can't get over what they've done, and they're demanding your attention, they're demanding that you get over it already, or let bygones be bygones, the best thing to do is gray rock them and reward them when they have good behavior. It won't change them. It will simply change the way they're treating you in this moment. You have to know that if you're going to continue this relationship, this will be your way of life if you ever want to have any control over it all. You do not reward them for bad behavior. You reward them for good behavior. Just like with a dog, instead of smacking the narcissist on the nose, you don't give them an emotional reaction. Instead of giving them a dog biscuit, you give them perceived love and affection as desired. If you do those things, the narcissist will treat you better in time. It's not an overnight fix. Truly, the only thing that you can do to change your life and make it better is go no contact. And that's the truth. And I don't want to discourage you from trying to make your life better if you're stuck with a narcissist. But if you are stuck, this is one way that you can temporarily put a band-aid on the situation. All right, this brings me to the question of the day. And the question of the day is, can you relate to this? Have you had a narcissist attack you when you had justified rage or anger or upset or fear with the narcissist? Have you had a narcissist demand that you get over it or that you just let bygones be bygones an hour after they did whatever they did? Have you noticed that narcissists don't show remorse or concern for you as a person and they don't have empathy? Share your thoughts and your experiences in the comments section below. And if you have dealt with this, let me know how you dealt with it. Maybe you can help another survivor do a little better next time they have to deal with it. That's all I've got for you right now. As always, thank you so much for being a part of my day and a part of my life. And hey, thanks for letting me be a part of yours. It really does mean a lot to me. I'll see you soon. 
It's my mission to teach others what I know to be true. You really can create the life you want. Take care of your body. Take care of your soul. Nurture the real you and introduce him or her to the world. Be comfortable in your own skin and in your place in this world. Take your spot. Take it now. And the universe will take its cue from you. You feel me? If so, subscribe to my channel. Let's get it done together.